A uh, little bit about me. Yes, I'm coming from Slovakia. I have, a, 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 let's say, a rich background. I've uh, worked in digital marketing and in the newsroom. I had several roles. I've, uh, I had, have, you know, uh, <laughs> I have done. Uh, the, my current role, the official is like subscription is, is called and I, I, I came up with that myself um, uh, because it's always hard to come up with something when you are doing uh, things that are like in this realm of a bridge role, um, uh, communicating with different departments and, you know, uh, connecting uh, divisions. Uh, so I'm a subscription growth and a retention specialist. So basically I uh, care a lot about uh, reader revenue, but from the perspective of, um, of, uh, of the newsroom. So, so uh, obviously also about uh, of, from the product perspective, but but most of all from the from the newsroom and content creation uh, perspective. I've I've a lot of side projects as well, um, uh, but I guess that's that's for another time. Um, during this presentation, I've. Uh, I've I, I'm, I'm going to encourage you. Uh, I. You were you were supposed to be sent, and I, I think everyone was on the on the copy of that of that um, uh, email. Uh, here is like a very simple uh, worksheet. I have it printed out as well. Um, I mean, you don't I have will, to print. Yeah, I will post it in chat here. So yes. I sent it last night, so everybody should have it. But in, just in case, here in the chat, you can find the link to this document. So it was maybe uh, a little bit late that's that's my fault um uh, and maybe not everyone could uh, print it out but maybe if you have a if you have uh, you know you can take notes um uh, and and look at it uh, maybe open it in a different window uh basically you will get all uh, this whole presentation and i'll i'll also send a write up of the you know uh, most important points i'll be talking about and some other resources that you can you know if if you want to go deep into something we will be talking about today because you know it's two hours and some of the things we will talk about let's say uh, branding there could be like a whole like like you know there's a whole mba on that <laughs> that that you can go into um so basically it takes years but um uh, what what i'm trying to say uh, i i want you to be left with um uh, at, at least some, you know, initial action points um, when we leave this two-day workshop that you can bring back to your newsrooms or your professional lives. I've seen some of the people who apply their um, uh, yeah, independent uh, journalists. That's that's fine. Uh, I think you you can use it. Like there, I will be talking about frameworks, right? Like how to think about things in connection of reader revenue. Uh, there will be some case studies. I'll, I'll show you some tools. I, I hope there, those will be um, interesting and useful for you. And uh, also this workshop sheet, if, if you fill it out and you'll bring it back to your newsroom, it's really, it will be a, a, a good way to start a conversation about the things we talk about now um, uh, at, at this workshop. So um, I encourage you to... Uh, uh, interrupt me anytime you want um also if you don't want to you know raise your hand and uh, uh speak that's that's fine you can just write in the chat uh, i'll be monitoring the chat so if there is uh, a question um, i'm going to answer it right away uh but anyway if, if someone wants to just raise their hand uh, that's okay as jackie mentioned there will be this audience research workshop in a week and in two weeks the really revenue i'll be going a little bit into those as well today but but like not too deep so so be sure to register for those workshops as well uh today we'll dive into volley proposition and branding again this is a topic there are like books about it if you put it in the you know, in, in YouTube, uh, you'll find like whole courses on that, that 
take hours. Uh, uh, we will try to go through it in 30 minutes, uh, just to give you like the 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 the, the real basics, and uh, then we will talk a little bit more about audio and podcasts in the newsroom. Uh, as Jackie mentioned, we have Viana who's um, uh, leading the audio division at SME here in Slovakia. Uh, we are colleagues actually. Um, When we get into like the reader revenue and what it is all about, it's 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 you know trying to build a news organization from the perspective that the readers come first, and also that the revenue comes from the readers. Um, so it's about direct support, and if you want to do a direct support, we all know like how it used to be. For decades, there was advertising, and then when advertising stopped bringing enough revenue, then usually uh, the the chief digital officers and 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 such people high up in the newsroom started putting in uh, more and more ads. Um, one thing I almost forgot to say um, uh, regarding minority media that I grew up in a, uh, in a household where my grandparents are actually ethnic Hungarians. So we always had a minority uh, newspaper on, you know, it, it was always uh, a part of my upbringing. So I, I understand this part of like trying to reach a community uh, of some people who are actually whose first language is different than the language of of the of the country they're living in and also uh obviously there are some other differences than uh than just language so as i said there are like what what are the priorities right it's like reader needs and understanding your reader needs and and this is the, the, the first, second, and third most important thing that, that you have to think about. Um, either when you're um, uh, into reader revenue already, or you're just thinking about starting a reader revenue, this is a very important um, uh, point to think about. Like, like this should be this should be something that's like right in the middle of it all, right? Your reader needs and understanding your audiences. In, in regard of understanding your audiences, the, the workshop that will be in one week, that, that will be like super, super useful for you um, because you will be given the frameworks of how to think about user research, uh, audience research and, and such things. But okay, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into this. Um, so it's not just about understanding your reader needs. It's like building the products around them. Obviously, you have a newspaper or, or a website or maybe just a newsletter or, or maybe you're thinking about starting a podcast for a certain community uh, within within let's say a region or a country, be it local, regional, or you know national. That that doesn't matter. So. Basically, you're taking this community, you're going to understand like, okay, so what does this community need? Is there something that the community lacks that you can bring? Already the, the thing that you're like a minority media in a, a community which belongs to like a, a different country, that's, that's a good starting point. It's kind of like a dif differentiator for you. It's already like, framing how like the piece of the community you're going after uh next just like two slides away we'll be talking about the value proposition where it's where it's like super useful super useful to not just like think about but we will be uh trying to you know i'll i'll, I'll show you some frameworks and we'll be trying to like put together like what should what can be or what is your value proposition um that will help help you uh to shape all the things that are next to come so if you if you um 
I'm, I'm sure you've heard about the membership uh, puzzle guide, uh, the, the handbook that they created. There is the reader re revenue playbook that the folks at the Google News Initiative created. There are other, uh, uh, you know, open source, uh, not just playbooks, but workshops that deal with read revenue. And the first chapter everywhere is about the value proposition. And it's not just about like being, you know, starting with a theory. It's like, how do you ground everything you do? And like having this, this one point, where you start and and that should be the value proposition from there you will be thinking about okay how do i set up a membership program or a subscription program or you know a donation crowdsourcing campaign or or, or whatever um in terms of like what comes next obviously you have to have tools have to make it easy for your supporters to support you to send you money or uh, maybe you don't need money there was um, like some uh, public radio station in the us they're encouraging their community if they cannot help financially they can help them with the skills they have so for example if someone is a programmer or developer I haven't come across a news organization that's that's not in need of uh, IT skills, uh, either building microsites or building up a payment system or just like doing these little things. We will be talking about about, about newsletters tomorrow. So, for example, um, for some media, it's like for for news sites, it's still an issue how to incorporate different widgets into the website. And, and this can be a big help if you can find someone who's willing to do that if you cannot do it yourself. Uh, also, we will be talking tomorrow about, or also today about building habits and, and how it all uh, comes uh, together. Okay, so as I said, like it's the it's one of the biggest challenges to say your community or your readers like um, like why do they need to support you? Like what's what's the what's the reason they should support you? What's the reason they should just like you know give you uh, a one time donation or give you every month five euros? And 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 that that's 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 what you know, the value proposition is about. That's about like, how do you stand apart from someone else? So uh, if you look at um, uh, popular services that are out there, so for example, let's take Spotify, right? It's like straight away, what's their value proposition? Unlimited music streaming, uh, Netflix, entertainment for all tastes, uh, Prime, uh, Amazon Prime, one day delivery um, and all the services uh, that that, that uh, you know come from that uh, basically online convenience. So coming back to the um, uh, what what the value proposition is 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 basically um, a statement of the value of product or services uh, uh, that that are addressing a particular user need. So it's basically really carving up this like let like you can say it's like a niche what are you going after um, and and you the better you uh, can define it the better you can um, uh, have a definition not just for yourself but for your uh, whole organization it's going to help you do other things so what does it look like for new sites? So I, I showed you what what look what what does it look like for Spotify and Netflix, but for example, the New York Times, right? The 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 value proposition of the New York Times is all the news that's fit to print. That used to be uh, New York Times value proposition in the old days where where it was just the newspaper, and now it's like they say it's the newspaper of the record. So everything that's news you'll find there and they're basically like the historians of what, what are the most important moments. So that's why they have a 2000 member uh, newsroom to create all these news. Um, uh, if, if also, if you look at New York Times, they're not um, putting out press releases. It's all, all its original reporting they're doing. Um, 
or, or let's take uh, The Economist. Uh, uh, in one of the interviews, the uh, editor-in-chief of The Economist, he said, uh, we sell the antidote to information overload. Uh, we sell finite, finishable, very tightly curated bundle of content. Um, and it's an answer to what's happening today, right? So like, um, let's take the current situation, uh, war in Ukraine. Uh, People, and I'm sure you've been doing this, I've been doing that, are just like doom scrolling and, and literally doom scrolling, going through like what's happening. And they like news organization have started to think about this. Okay, like there are there are people, there will be always news junkies, people who will go come to your site and they'll just like want information minute by minute. Um, I have seen it on our website the first day the traffic just like skyrocketed and and it, it was there like twice uh, the audience it used to be for for a week now we are entering or actually we are entering the fourth week of the war and we can see like people are starting to lose interest slowly but but you can see that and so news organization all over uh, the world uh, Obviously, they're still doing the live blogs, but others are doing special newsletters. So like a daily newsletter where they can write five, let's say, biggest developments that happened that day in regard to the war of Ukraine. Or some of the newsrooms, and um, I'm sure Jana will talk about this, uh, are setting up special podcast editions where they just take the, the, the most important news and they uh, transform it into a podcast, into a short audio content where they'll give their listeners like the top five or top seven things that, that happen. Um, so, so those are like small products that newsrooms are doing and they also start like this value of value proposition like, okay, so we want to give like a finite thing for an audience that they can digest and that they can get. For the economists, that's the whole business, right? Like they have a newspaper and also they used to have, um, or actually they still have it. They have this uh, this, this product called uh, Economist uh, Espresso, which gives you like, you know, uh, five bullet points of, of, of news. Um, another value proposition I like uh, is from Axios Local. So Axios is a five-year-old, a uh, news organization in the US, they started national and in and recently they started opening like small newsrooms uh, in, in emerging cities uh, across uh, the United States. And uh, basically what they're doing, um, they are like hiring reporters on loca in, in those locations. So if you say like Axios Washington, that's like one person or, or two people uh, writing a daily newsletter that they're delivering. And uh, their value proposition of this like division that they set up, value uh, Axios Locals, is uh, we want to bring smart, modern, trustworthy local news to every community in America. And it's, it's a very clear communication of what they are doing. They, uh, they have been uh, known or they are known for their smart brevity format, which means they are trying to communicate to audiences which are in, you know, really rushing and they just want to like break down the news into very digestible format. So they developed this, uh, this um, uh, newsletter uh, format that they are using and they're basically now just bringing it to also local communities. Okay, so how, how do you write a value proposition on the, of, of your own? Uh, like the good thing is or, or, uh, to start with uh, what you are first at, like what you're best at and what, what you're only doing. So if you look at your news organization or your news outlet or Let's say if, if you're like just an independent journalist and you're start, starting to uh, build a, a single um, a newsletter or, or just a podcast about like one, one thing, like it's, it's good to tell, like to have this statement and it's the value proposition. You, you, you will not usually find the value proposition of a news outlet written on 
like their about us page. Usually the value proposition is something internal, something that the newsrooms keep to themselves, tell it to the staff. Uh, it's it's like maybe written somewhere and not just newsrooms, like big organization as well. Um, and, and basically from the value proposition, then you uh, create a mission statement and the mission statement is something that you will write on your about us page. Um, so when, when you're thinking about the value proposition you wanna create is like, look, okay, so what, 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 what do you make or what do you do a service? So maybe it's a newspaper or maybe it's a news, just news website for a certain community. And maybe it's just a newsletter. I'm saying just a newsletter, but newsletter is like totally fine. Um, okay, who are you serving? Like what's, what's the segment? What, what's the community of people you're trying to reach? And so what are you trying like so, so every community, every like people, they have some pains, right? Like like people, they need, they have needs, right? And how are you targeting, or how are you trying to solve those needs of that community? In terms of like the the very obvious thing for minority media is that you're trying to bring news in the language that they are not getting. So let's say, um, uh, I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't have a, a, a good um, uh, example now. So let's look at local, right? Local in Europe is um, a, a, a network of, of uh, news sites in different countries, which are trying to reach um, communities of foreigners in those countries. So for example, local Sweden, uh, uh, local Germany and so on. And so... Or, or da David, could it be also an example, I think, for minority media I found in the conversations is that they're really trying to create community or bring that community together in a country, the language community. Yes. Um, uh, so, so, so it's definitely, yes, if there's like not like there is a community but you're basically trying to find it that's that's what you meant like they're like you know that there is like a minority mm. of people so let's say let's say in the coming years in many countries uh, neighboring ukraine there will be a large ukrainian community like like that's something that like that's a fact in poland in slovakia in hungary in romania everywhere like suddenly there will be a Ukrainian community. At the moment, there is not a Ukrainian, Ukrainian like website or outlet or news, newsletter serving those people in these countries. Some are emerging, but some are not. So yes, they, you can definitely apply it also to this. Uh, uh, I'm just reading the comments. Could you write these open source links in the chat? Uh, yes, yes, I'll, I'll send them in, in a mi minute. Um, uh, uh, and someone sa says a lot of migrants found difficult to understand the process of Brexit on, in the UK thanks to the lack of coverage. Yes, yes, that's right. That's a, that's a good point again. So so basically that's that's good thinking about the topic. So you're basically going to target those communities and you can build something around it. So you don't have to have something already. And um, in terms of like thinking about this, uh, there are different frameworks. Maybe one of the most popular ones is this from a Swiss company called Strategizer. Uh, they created something called the Value Proposition Canvas. There's like a whole, uh, universe around, uh, yeah, like uh, uh, build this. There are like many YouTube videos. Um, it's a bit, a bit um, uh, in in this like it's simple, but it's more like if we were doing this workshop uh, in person, I would maybe choose this framework uh, to go through with you. We would have post its and we would be you know playing around with it a little bit. Um, there is there is this um, uh, other framework that uh, you can find in the uh, Google News Initiative Reader Revenue Playbook. Let me copy the link into the 
into the chat. So uh, this is one, and it's it's fine because this value uh, proposition framework is not only looking at like how do you come up with a value proposition, but it's already has built in like okay, so okay, you have come up with your value proposition. Now let's think about your pro the product you're going to make based on that value proposition. So let's say you you can, can come to a co conclusion that you will uh, set up a subscription for your website, right? So okay, so do you have a single subscription or do you going to have are you going to have like different tiers of subscriptions like a sub standard premium and like a club version of, uh, of of a subscription and what can be the benefits that you will be attaching uh, to those tiers so for example some newsrooms have recently tried to um, uh, and and I know uh, this is something uh, that the Washington Post is having success with but also here in Europe uh, Gazeta Viborcha uh, where you can say okay so if you if you buy the highest tier of subscription, we will give you an extra subscription for someone that you can, you know, gift it to. But I like this um, this framework, which is coming from the membership uh, puzzle uh, guide handbook. I posted the link, so those are the two links that I uh, talked about in the beginning. Uh, it, it's a lot of reading, but it's worth it <laughs> uh, uh, if, 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 if you want to go deep into that. But basically what this is uh, trying to say is like how, like, like come up with a sentence that is your value proposition. Okay, so you start with our journal and you fill in journalism for local language helps this community who want to be informed um, about what's going on. So let's say uh, if we take foreigners uh, in, in UK who don't speak well English uh, and you're wanting to target them, that you want to bring them news about the Brexit and what's going to happen, what's going to change for them. And, so you're going to reach this, this, you're going to do this job for them and you're going to bring news. So that's that's a pain that they have. There's That's, that's the need uh, uh, that you recognize that this community has. Like they don't know because they are not getting the right information in the right language. And you will be giving it them in the form of, let's say a website or a newsletter, uh, et cetera. So here is a here is one example of a value proposition of uh, uh, the correspondent, uh, which which operates in Netherlands, and their value proposition reads like this: Our journalism helps Dutch readers. So, our journalism. That's that's the thing they're doing. It helps who's the community. The community is the whole country, so they're targeting. Dutch readers who want an antidote to the daily news grind. So basically they're saying like, okay, we're going to do slow news. This is uh, translated in other words. So slow news, not like live blogs, but like deep reporting and by skewing hot takes and by doing deeply research reporting that articulates not just the problem, but what can be done about it. So you're taking journalism, you're taking Dutch readers who have to follow a lot of news and you're saying, no, we will give you deeply uh, researched topics, deeply researched reporting, and uh, we will give you also solution journalism. So we will tell you like, okay, climate change, we have a climate reporter and they will tell you if there's something going on. So let's say uh, the, 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 like, let's say how to, how to manage waste in a household. So it's not going to tell you what's the problem, but how can you uh, deal with it? 
another uh, this this is like a random newspaper in the US and uh, a local newspaper uh, which which has a, a value proposition like this our solution focused local journalism so again they're already taking the 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 solution uh, part in the beginning so that's something they're they're good at and they want to deliver helps readers who want to understand the whole story of the community by eliminating the news fatigue caused by just covering what's wrong and replacing it with a more holistic and nourishing local news experience that helps our city reach its full potential. So it's like a bit complicated um, uh, if, if you are not an uh, English native. Uh, basically what they're saying is we want to report on our community but not just bring what's wrong, but also take a full view of the, of the story and also bring the solutions. So here's something I talked about before, it's basically like a template for, for a, a random minority media um, uh, news outlet. What's... what's um, uh, what I would say is unique about the minority media, we already said, like you're going after a community which has a, a specific culture with a specific language in a country which is not their like primary country. Like obviously they, they live there, they, they've, you know, were maybe born there, but it, it's like they're, they're looking at other country from, from that one. Um, if you... Um, I can give you now like a few seconds if you want to look at the value proposition at the worksheet and maybe fill in for yourself uh, uh, of uh, uh, if you got inspired by some something and then we will move uh, quickly to, to branding. Is there is there another question meanwhile? Anyone? Uh, Dave, David, why don't we just take a minute and introduce ourselves, everybody, just very briefly, um, once you've worked on the worksheet, just to tell us, you know, who you are, which media you are from, and also whether you, whether whether your media, you know, is, is um, you know, getting any of its revenues from readers now. Yeah, um, okay. I'm sorry, I meant to do that at the beginning, but forgot, so... <laughs> okay so let me stop uh, sharing the screen so that we can see everyone and shall we take it from the yeah. you know uh, up me no okay so uh do, do you want me to call out people is this going to be better uh yeah i know Okay, so uh, I'm I'm going to call out people as I see them in 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 my view or in the, in the Zoom. So uh, hope I don't mess up the names too much. Um, uh, I see Hilal seven, seven. Hi, Hilal seven, Maria. I understand the pronunciation. So I actually write a, uh, um, I wrote a tip article about uh, one of your articles when I was doing my fellowship with journalism by Code UK through the wow. New Spectrum project. It was about quizzes and Q and A's, for instance. Um, how to um, direct the readers' attention? It was about that briefly. So yeah, I'm um, a journalist from Turkey, and I live in the UK. I write about uh, migrants and refugees mostly. So that's my story. Okay. Thank you. Cool, cool. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, uh, Elena Martin Lores. Yes, sorry. Uh, what was the question again? Sorry, I got lost for a moment. Uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, the question was just to like uh, introduce like what, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm from a small outlet in Galicia in the north part of Spain. And uh, we are currently only two people working like uh, daily. Like sometimes we have some people that help us at some point, but normally we are only two people. And uh, we write in Galician. That is oh, what is it called, Elena? Sorry, uh, my my company, yeah. Sharda. 
C-A-R-D-A, Sharda? Oh, okay. I think I, I think I looked at that one. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, we, so, we, oh, yeah, I did. I did. I, I thought it was really interesting, actually. But yes, we can have another conversation about okay. that. Thank Very you. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, I see then uh, Julia Tapainer. Tapainer. Yeah, you spelled it very correctly, <laughs> exceptionally correctly. Um, so I'm I'm Julia. I'm a freelance journalist, and I come from a German-speaking minority in Italy, in South Tyrol. And um, I work for different media, but one of the media is a, a German-speaking minority media in South Tyrol. It's called Barfus. And we were also among one of the news fellowship, me and a colleague from there, we, we got the news spectrum fellowship last in the last round. So uh, that's how I uh, got to know about this um, work, uh, workshop. And I personally, when I write for the local media, I write mostly about um, social social topics like homeless people and women. Uh, but if I write for like bigger news, then I'm more due to my academic background, uh, I write about Russia and the Russian speaking world and international politics. Cool, cool. Thank you. Uh, then we have Nadine. <laughs> Nadine. <laughs> uh, uh, no problem. It's Michalek is my last name, but Michalek. don't worry. And me. Okay. But uh, don't worry. It's a weird name always. Uh, yeah, I'm also a freelancer. I used to work for the VDR. It's quite big here in Germany. I'm from Germany. Um, I belong to the um, minority of Sinti and Roma, and um, my family is from Mace uh, North Macedonia. And uh, yeah, I actually I work uh, a lot just for um, yeah more like uh, mainstream media and also for Deutsche Welle now, thanks to the scholarship um, here from New Spectrum. And uh, and yes, I plan with a colleague uh, to do like a Roma podcast um, in Europe, uh, maybe in English, so we can reach out to the whole community. So that's why, yeah, this is really interesting for me. Cool, cool, thank you, thank you. Uh, next I see uh, Idua Dadebat. I hope I didn't mess that up too much. <laughs> That's me. Yeah, it's correct. Thank you. Uh, my name is Idoya. Uh, I'm the digital marketing strategist at Berria, which is a, well, a Basque newspaper, both uh, print and digital editions. And the digital edition is mainly supported by, by our members. And if we, our information is all open, but uh, we have a membership program. I'm glad to be here. Oh, nice. So you already have a membership program. Yeah. Cool. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, next, I see Ina Selina. Ah, your, your mic is muted. Uh, Ina, uh, we, we can't hear you. Your, your mic is muted. Sorry. Uh, hello. hello. Yes, I can hear you now. Um, I'm a freelance journalist from Lithuania. Uh, mostly and regularly, I'm writing for Lithuanian radio and television um, website, mostly political themes, uh, covering uh, Russian minority in Lithuania, Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. Um, but also, uh, I had uh, a podcast in Russian uh, for two years. Uh, it was mostly for, uh, it was designed for Russian minority, but it was how listened by Lithuanians mostly. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> so, but, but now it is, uh, by some reason, it's a little bit paused. Uh, but um, I had a new idea how to continue it and how to develop it. Uh, so I just want to make some changes in this. And so I, I decided that what I need I, I need your lectures, your workshops. Maybe I, I will have some new instruments to, to continue this in, in a new way. So, so. 
Cool, cool. Thank you. Uh, okay, last I see with the camera on Elvira Delgado. I guess the rest of the gang is uh, cannot. I mean, I, I take it if someone doesn't have the uh, video on, we're just going to continue. So Elvira, uh, go on. Uh, El Elvira, do, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, um, I'm Elvira and I'm journalist in Bainana. Um, Bainana is a digital magazine and it's the first one in both in, this, in Spanish and in Arabic. And it was founded by four uh, Syrian refugees. They arrived to Madrid and, and they founded the magazine last year. And um, we are all of us volunteer, except of us. Um, our main topics are the migration, of course, uh, refugees. Um, we try to post about rights, uh, happy stories, of course. And also we have a part about useful information for, for migrants. Um, and our audience is uh, both in Arab countries and also in, in, in Spain. Um, we try to, to create a bridge with, uh, Latin, with Latino community because it's very big in, in Spain. But now it's, we are uh, starting, so we focus in Arab and <clears throat> Spanish speakers audience. Cool, cool. Sounds, sounds great. Thank you. And uh, then we have Soad Abbas, uh, who said uh, uh, will introduce. Correct. Oh. Hi, sorry, I don't have the video now. I'm uh, with my son climbing every two minutes. So I'm uh, Soad, I'm a freelance journalist. I, uh, I come also from Syria and to live in Berlin. I've been working uh, with, uh, I've worked actually with a newspaper called Abwab, uh, which cares for the refugees since 2015. Um, uh, and now I'm uh, working by myself, uh, more concentrating on gender and sexuality and uh, relationships among immigrants. Um, that's it. <laughs> Okay, okay, thank you. And uh, uh, that's that's everyone we have then uh, uh, Javier who, who who said he he's joining us from IPI. Uh, so let's continue with the presentation. Um, okay. Okay, so just 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 quickly finish the first uh, first section. I, from what you said, you're more interested in the in the podcast part of of, of, of the thing. So so I'll I'll go a little bit quickly through this so that we can get to the audio uh, part of it. So basically, when we talked about the value proposition, then there is this 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 thing that uh, news, uh, let's say, academics or like people. Uh, Usually they, they do it in the newsrooms as well. They say like, okay, so what's your North Star? Like what, what is your goal? What, what is the thing that you're aiming for? Um, and um, it's, it's basically something that when you work for an organization or if you work for yourself, or let's say that uh, you're just like, uh, again, starting or restarting a podcast of yours or, or creating a new project, like the North Star you should like set for yourself is something that you're looking for um, to reach, right? Right. So it can be like, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'll reach ten thousand listeners with the first season of my podcast. Okay, so the podcast is going to be ten episodes long, and I want to reach ten thousand people. Now, how are you going to reach it? So the the uh, the way uh, North Star should be uh, conceived is like something that's achievable. Uh, also bold, but basically that's like memorable and, and you can achieve it. Uh, uh, if, if, you, if you look at this, this is like a, uh, this like a, um, uh, uh, 
I lost the word, uh, a scheme uh, by by the FT strategies, uh, like a framework where they said like, okay, so if you have a North Star, then uh, you shall put uh, down the outcome. So in order, so let's say this is a, this is a, some news outlet that wants to reach 10 million subscribers by uh, 2024. So how do they reach them? Uh, they build out steps, like little steps, like what they are they're going to do? These steps are the outcomes. So they say like, okay, so we need to reach this many people by this uh, this year. We need to reduce churn, which means like how many subscribers end their subscription in, in, in a certain period. And we need to increase our uh, average revenue per user. So there, those are like, those little steps that are like breaking the North Star into, and then they're setting a uh, hypothesis like, okay, so in, turn, in, in order to reach uh, this many subscribers or to read churn, uh, we're going to build like, let's say a strong onboarding project. Um, in terms of when we're talking about the podcast, like, okay, so how do you reach 10,000 listeners with the podcast? Obviously, if it's a new podcast, uh, you start small. So let's say uh, your that's that's your North North Star goal, like that reaching 10,000 listeners. Like what are the outcomes that you need to achieve? What are the, the different steps that you are going to be taking to reach that North Star goal? So you're obviously going to start with people who know you. So it's it's like all podcast creators this is the first thing they do, like send the podcast to all all your friends, uh, all your family, some uh, some uh, uh, podcast creators and also newsletter creators who were successful. They said we start. Uh, I started like that that I uh, just exported every email contact from my Gmail and I sent them an email like, oh, this is a new project that I'm doing. I would love it if you can follow it because obviously those are the people you're close to, you have some, some contact and they, they will probably not consider it a spam. Uh, and then you've built from, uh, uh, from, from there. So, so what, where can you reach new people with your podcast? Another outcome can be, okay, you need a YouTube channel because for a podcast, uh, it turns out YouTube is the biggest discovery place. So there has been done this like recent research by Edison uh, Research in the US uh, where they were asking also like super listeners like, okay, how, how do you find new podcasts? And obviously the first thing was like, okay, my friends tell me about the new, new podcast. So it's something like recommended by a friend, like word of, word of mouth. Okay, what's, what's the second thing? Like, oh, I hear about another podcast. Uh, when I'm listening to a podcast I like, so cross promotion with other podcasts. So that's another outcome you can put down. Okay, so now what, what else? If people like your podcast, what are they going to do? They wanna, you're going to ask them like, okay, share the news that we have a podcast. And in order to share the news, like you better have a social media profile for that podcast so for example if instagram is popular in your in the community you're trying to reach maybe it's a good idea to set up an instagram account for that podcast so if someone who really likes that podcast and is an instagram uh, user can uh, tag you in a story in a post and then you can reshare it and uh, reach uh, reach other people and so like these are the steps that you're going to reach your North Star goal. I'm still coming back to the audience research. It's 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 something um, we don't have time to talk about today, but like it's super important because you're going to uh, uh, listen and 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 see all these case studies also today. Uh, from Jana tomorrow, from Vicent and Gwyn, uh, who are going to tell you, okay, we did this and 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 uh, this was the outcome and it was like super successful. It might be a good template for you, but you don't know. I mean, it's good to go and try, but it's always good to at least do some initial research when you uh, try to adapt something for your audience and also adapt it for your organization. So let's say um, uh, when, when you're trying to copy a format that let's say a New York Times 
uh, has has come up with. Obviously, you will never have like ten people. So so they uh, they created a, a new new mobile app for audio only, and the team which is servicing that is like fifteen or twenty people. So in terms of other news organization in the world or like the news organization we work for, I work for, you work for, uh, this is not going to happen. You usually will have like one person or maybe not even that it's going to be just like a, a, some intern sitting on a chair we, who will get like a, you know, a, a, a new task. Um, so so the, the, the key takeaways should be Start with the value proposition. That should be your guide. If you already have a membership and, and you haven't really thought about the value proposition, I'm, I'm sure there is one. It was just not written down. And the same goes for the North Star. So it's something that it's derived from the value proposition, but it's really uh, something which is measurable. It, it, you really need to think about. So for, for example, if you have a, uh, a, a, an organization we just started membership program, I'm sure you have some somewhere in your head, okay, we need to reach 5,000 members to become sustainable or to reach 70% uh, of our revenue that's missing, that's supposed to come from read revenue. And it's not just like the, the top manager for this to know. It's like for the whole organization. Um, um, so, so basically you need to have like everyone aligned. Okay, so like this is our goal and we're going to do everything to reach, reach this goal. Um, also the value proposition helps you communicate with, uh, to the audience. Um, so whether it's a podcast or a news outlet, uh, it becomes much more clear what you're doing and who are you trying to reach. Um, okay, let's go quickly through through this branding part and get to the podcasting. Um, so, in terms of like the brand, and and this also goes for a podcast. So we will hear uh, uh, Jana in a bit, where she talk, where, where she will talk about uh, the the reputation that their daily news podcast uh, has built up uh, throughout the years, and how how is it helping them. So basically, a brand is not just a logo, even though a logo is like super important, but uh, it's it's basically like how do you want your audience to see you. Again, something that's derived from value proposition. When you look at uh, at, at these pictures, that's that's everything is guardian. Um, basically, what what I'm trying to show you. So, when you have a news outlet, or you have a newsletter, or you have a podcast, um, in terms of branding, it's really good to think about like, okay, so these are our primary colors. This, this is our logo, and this is something we're trying to say. So doesn't matter if you're trying, uh, if you're reading the Guardian on the website, or seeing a post on on Facebook in the middle, or uh, seeing a post on on Instagram on the left. It's it all makes you think. Okay, this is Guardian because it's like they have they 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 did the work and they created some templates which they're using. Um, so basically, yes, the, the audiences should recognize you everywhere and doesn't matter what your uh, product is. Um, for example, this is uh, especially important when you're crafting a new, uh, new campaign uh, for converting uh, readers to members, right? So you are going to have an ad, you're going to have a, a promotional article, a promotional newsletter, you're going to have like a, a, a landing page where there is like the payment. And research has showed that the more people see that, okay, this is all aligned also like visually and in terms of like what you're telling those people, uh, the more conversions you're going to get. Um, 
I really recommend using like newsrooms Canva. I'm, I'm sure everyone heard about Canva. So it's like this 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 platform where um, it's it's free. It's free to start. There are like some special things that you you need to pay a subscription for. But basically, for a small newsroom to create social media posts that that can be used by the whole newsroom. So for example, basically you have to think about it like in terms of Okay, I'm going to create templates for my colleagues, and we're going to use it in our Instagram post. We are going to use it as uh, cover images on our website, and it's it's all going to uh, be worked out from there. They have a mobile app uh, where you can do uh, like you know uh, visuals very very easily. And and um, I've, I've I've come across many newsrooms that they have um, uh, used it and are pretty satisfied. You can do also videos uh, with Canva, uh, so it's it's a, it's a good tool. Another quote just uh, recently from 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 Nielsen: "Brand is also about trust." So again, uh, that's 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 the message, and. Um, Again, the key takeaways. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm rushing through this just to get to the audio part. Um, so, so basically, just just the one thing I'm really want to convey from from this is that your best product should be your your content. And if you're trying to do a campaign around something, it should be your product. Like it shouldn't be like, oh, we have a new website. Like if 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 like that shouldn't be the message. The me message should be like. Oh, we've we've created uh, 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 a website that will like better serve you, uh, your you, our audience. Um, okay, audio. Um, the the main point I want to make like really really early on is like. There is like podcast and audio as, as a whole are still an emerging format which newsrooms are using in terms of how many how many podcasts are there and how many uh, other uh, media are there. I have here a new uh, uh, here. Yes. So so this is this is actually like these are real numbers. So if you if you look at if, if you think about like if someone tells you, oh, they're like so many podcasts i cannot choose like you don't hear people saying like oh there are like so many youtube videos uh obviously there are like much more youtube videos than podcasts there are, um around now now there are around three or four million podcasts in the world and four three or four million you know youtube videos that's that's nothing you you aren't even thinking about it and there are like so many more books and and articles so but when you're thinking like, oh, should I start another podcast? Yes, yes, you definitely should. There's like not enough podcasts out there, so like don't don't be scared. Like um, there was a recent research uh, report uh, by uh, this company called Refonic, and they said like, okay, maybe there are too many English podcasts, but all other languages are fine. Like like if if you're trying to do another English language podcast, you you might have a bigger problem. But if you're going to do it in let's say Spanish or uh, other languages, uh, uh, many languages in India uh, uh, are, are are emerging. Uh, that's that's fine because there are like audiences which are not getting podcasts in their own language. So in terms of when we're talking about minority media. This is going to definitely be underrepresented, underrepresented, and something which you can like go straight into. Okay, a question. Maybe you have seen this. Um, uh, big publishers they started to include these these little widgets like listen to our article, the uh, listen to our article. Um, uh, you don't have to read it; just like play it. And there will be like an artificial voice that's going to read the article out loud. Um, uh, so, so what, why are they doing that? And and the reason uh, is actually uh, pretty straightforward. Um, I've seen 
uh, research from Wall Street journals and, and, and other news outlets, they say, okay, so we started testing this and the result was readers started spending even more time on our website and they returned more often to the website where there was an option to listen to an article. So not just like in terms of listening to a podcast on a website, but actually like I come to a website which is like to an article, which is not a podcast and I can listen to it. And that, that's actually driving um, user, like reader habit and audiences are coming back. And uh, the, the, the research that the Wall Street Journal had, has, has done actually told them that it's not just like old people or old, like older uh, readers, but it's like readers or, of all ages. Um, it's part of the habit building strategy for a publisher. Basically, when we are talking about reader revenue, and I'm sure uh, you will get to this in a workshop in two weeks, uh, when when the read revenue will be uh, discussed, but basically um, there are these these two notions when building read revenue acquisition and 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 retention. So on one hand, you're trying to uh, convert uh, uh, make up from readers, uh, let's say regularly paying supporters or like once a time uh, paying uh, supporters or or people who donate to you. And now how do you keep them doing that again and again? And, and that's called retention. And within that like re retention, it's about building habits. So like, how do you remind them that this is what they are getting? So that's why, uh, that's why publishers are uh, employing podcasts, newsletters, uh, building uh, games, puzzles, recipes, um, doing events to do something that's recurring, that's like re in, in some, you know, fashion uh, recurring and, and they can again and again remind, remind those audiences, oh, we can do this podcast you like just because we're getting uh, uh, paid uh, uh, via a subscription or a membership. Uh, the good news is, uh, this has been like quite uh, difficult to achieve for like small audiences. There is this tool which is called Beyond Words, um, and 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 it's actually uh, it has a free tier, uh, uh, and you can actually it it operates in sixty five languages. So. Uh, Many of the languages, I'm not sure if all the languages, but many of the languages I've heard today, it, it has, uh, and, and it can do, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm posting it to the, to the chat. Uh, basically what, what you do uh, with this tool, sorry. Uh, basically, what you, what you do with this tool, you can pass, the, uh, you, you, you can copy and paste uh, the text of your article, and it will give you uh, uh, a computer generated audio, which you can include on your website. If you're running your website on WordPress, for example, there is an integration for that. So every time a new article is published, it will automatically uh, transfer uh, the, the article into uh, an audio and there will be like an audio player. Um, I believe their pricing is um, uh, fairly okay, but the free tier has 30,000 characters per month. And what's also nice about it, you can turn these audio articles into a podcast within that, uh, within that platform. So um, when we're talking about an audio strategy, I, 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 um, I already presented one part of it, like the audio articles, which are being used by big publishers, but also uh, can be used thanks to tools like Beyond Words uh, by, by smaller publishers. Um, so, so that's one thing. Podcast is obviously something that like in 2022, if you're a news outlet, of any size, I believe you should have a, a podcast strategy. That doesn't have doesn't have to mean that you have to 
you know, have 20 podcasts in your portfolio or, or something like that. It basically says like, okay, try it out. Okay, like if you try it out and it's not for your audience, it's okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident that any news outlet doing uh, a, a podcast uh, will succeed with that podcast. Obviously, you won't have um, uh, 4 million daily uh, listeners as the daily has uh, uh, from the New York Times, uh, possibly even more today. This is a stat for, uh, from, from that data point from last year. But uh, it's one piece of the puzzle. We, if we were talking about reader revenue and talking about building habits and connecting on a regular basis with your audiences in different formats, podcast is definitely like a big piece of a puzzle that's going to help your overall strategy. So we have audio articles podcast, then we have live audio. We will get to that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you all heard of uh, Clubhouse, but there are other uh, other platforms or apps that you can use for your um, uh, live audio strategy. For example, uh, if Twitter is popular in your community, Twitter Spaces, which is a live audio feature of the social network, uh, is being used today by, by many English speaking uh, media. So for example, I follow Bloomberg on Twitter and Almost every two, three hours, I see a notification telling me, oh, there's a new Twitter space. They're talking about something, usually in connection with Ukraine. If you want to go deep into, into, into audio and voice uh, voices, maybe you want to uh, you know, come up with a smart speaker uh, skill. But again, that's a little bit advanced. And, and the smart speakers, um, people have them, but, but it's like much more widespread in in the us than in other regions maybe in germany i would say for if if you're uh if you're trying to reach a german speaking audience uh i would say there's a big possibility they have a smart speaker at home because it's uh it's like you people use it as a uh, as just a speaker uh usually just for for uh for music and if you're like skillful enough uh, and you can make them like, oh, you already listened to this smart speaker. Why not listen to our uh, our show? Uh, but let's say that's a little bit advanced and, and, and I'm not going to go deep into that. I just wanted to mention it. Um, so <sighs> why podcast? It's like... I already mentioned spoken word is a powerful tool, and uh, especially for minority uh, uh, minority media, more than ninety percent of people listen to podcasts on their earphones. What does it uh, What does it say uh, about the relationship between you as a creator and 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 the listener? Is that they are just listening to you. So it's like a much deeper connection than when people are reading an article. Uh, when they're like listening, it's like they put on their earphones, they basically stop listening to the outside world and they're just like, just with you. So it's, so it's um, uh, many podcast creators, when they, meet, uh, when they meet their listeners in real life, they're saying um, that uh, it's almost like people feel they're friends because they have been listening to their voices and now they see them in real life. So many podcasters have, uh, I'm, I'm sure every podcaster, Jana can tell us uh, in a minute about it. I'm sure every uh, podcaster, every podcast host has a story about uh, how they met someone who's listening to them. And it almost felt like, oh, like two friends are uh, chatting, even though it was the first time they met uh, in their life. Okay, so starting a topic here. Here, here is uh, here is something for your worksheet uh, to put down. If you if you if you don't have a topic at the moment, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, if you don't have a podcast at the moment at your newsroom, the, this is this is the right place to think about it. So in a in a minute, Jana is going to tell us about some of the podcasts uh, Denix May is doing. They have a popular daily news podcast. Um, 
so basically you're starting with like choosing the topic like do you want to do a news podcast do you want to do uh, an interview show do you want to do a history podcast a history podcasts are actually uh, pretty popular so especially when we're talking about let's say uh, i have seen um on the on the uh on, on the list sorry <laughs> that's my family um uh on the list of participants uh for 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 this workshop uh that someone from a german speaking newspaper in romania applied and and interestingly i was like okay what's german speaking like german newspaper in romania what's that what's that about and actually there was like a large community uh, or like large german community around like almost million people uh, uh 50 60 years ago in in, in romania so so basically if you do a history podcast on that for that community that's that, that's i'm sure uh going to be also outside uh romania uh so let's so so choose a topic so, okay so what you want to do then you're going to have to decide is it going to be daily or weekly i'm going to warn you you can do it daily but it takes a lot of effort like it's it's pretty time intense so I, i i would recommend starting a podcast that's that's weekly um at this point any questions i i i sorry i i, I went a, a little bit uh too 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 far yeah i have a question yeah um Is it a bad thing if you make it like two two weekly or like every second week or once a month? Do you say that's like not regularly enough and that the readers will lose track or? Um, at first I thought that, uh, but then there is like a super like super popular podcast in Slovakia that's actually bi-weekly. Uh, it's by the Forbes magazine and it's like this one hour long conversations about mental health and it turns out bi-weekly is fine like um you have to think about uh, when we're coming back to your north star and and to your goal uh in terms of like following how your audience is um, um you know increasing it's going to be slower obviously and there's going to be a long tail So uh, if you have a daily news podcast, that means like, oh, there's a new edition every day. Uh, you will quickly see how big is your audience. With a bi-weekly or a, I wouldn't do a monthly, but let's say a monthly show, there is going to, it's going to take months to see how big your audience is. So so if 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 you can keep track with that it's fine it's 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 like uh it's it's going to be it's going to be okay even if it's, if it's bi-weekly um so yeah any other question at this point okay um, so, yes yeah yeah oh. go. no sorry um i have a a question um uh, is there any um a specific land Uh, so sorry what what do you mean uh, experience show or especially you know I'm talking about um from a spanish audience um that we have a uh, very successful podcast that can last for uh, two hours and then a really really successful podcast slash you know video uh, satire comedy um which is two minutes 20 seconds which is basically the length that twitter allows you to reach on a daily basis like a million views um i'm sure that my um spanish colleagues in this audience uh will know um to which podcast i'm referring to so yeah any uh, specific um, ideas about that so in terms of like how long uh should 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 the podcast be it's all it almost doesn't matter the most popular podcast in the world is the joe rogan experience which takes three hours and it's the most listened to podcast and it has been for the past few years um when you're starting a new podcast i always recommend aiming around 30 minutes um it really depends on the topic so if it uh, so, so let's say um 
so let's say like there are different formats of, 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 of a podcast, right? So like you can have a host thread podcast. So it's like just one person reading basically an article. It's almost like the audio article, but it's not, not auto-generated. Like it, there's like no artificial gen- intelligence. It's just like a person sits down, reads an article and they put it out as a podcast. Turns out this, these kind of uh, things, they like, they're shorter because like it's, it's much harder to listen to one voice. You, you have to have a skilled host to, to, to pull it off for a longer period. So that's like, that's why they usually make it like 10, 12, 15 minutes if it's like just one person. And in, 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 uh, when I look around in the countries around, like in the top 10, there's always one podcast that is just like one person reading a commentary or, or an article or uh, also The Guardian has a popular podcast, which is called The Guardian uh, Long Read. Uh, they put it out every every Sunday, and it's fifteen to twenty minutes. Just one person reading a long article. Um, then, if you have an interview, suddenly you have two, three, four people. In terms of like an, uh, if you have a regular interview with two people, in, um, to to really uh, give enough um, space for the topic to develop, you need, I would say, at least twenty minutes. Um, so if it's just like an interview when like one person is asking the other person, um, 20 minutes is fine, 20, 25 minutes. But, but basically, um, I have worked with like a few news organizations by now developing new podcasts. And they always, they always thought like, oh, it's like we should, we should go shorter than longer. And it's like they were aiming at the beginning 15 to 20 minutes, right? So also, also <laughs> this, this uh, F- uh, Slovak Forbes podcast, the, in, in the beginning, they were saying like, oh, we just wanted to have uh, 20 minutes. Now the, the, the podcast is regularly about 60 minutes and no one is complaining. And I would actually say it's even better because they, and it really depends on the topic. They're, they're, they're like, uh, a journalist is uh, is interviewing psychologists about mental health, and within an hour they can go really deep into that topic. So in the end, you feel like okay, I really understood what they are talking about. Um, so I would say like take the time that you need to really deliver on the promise of your podcast. If you can do it in ten minutes or two minutes, as the satirical podcast does, that's great. But, but usually the pace the podcasts are, it's a bit slower. So when you're listening to a radio, um, there is, there's this thing, like there cannot be a second of silence in radio. Just, just cannot be. That's like, no. In podcasting, that's actually encouraged. Like you want to hear, um, if, if I'm a host and I'm talking to someone about an, an, uh, a difficult topic, and I ask a difficult question. You as a podcast listener, you want to hear that five, 10 second of silence when that guest is thinking about the answer. It really gives the podcast um, the way that the, 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 the uh, you know, it really just, just takes you there to the interview. You don't feel like, okay, this is cut or something. So that's why like when you're editing podcasts, it's really um, people say they rather enjoy a rough version of the podcast because they feel like, okay, this is happening now and I'm right there. And um, obviously skillful uh, podcast editors are able to do podcasts uh, that way. But when you're starting, it's a it's a good idea to leave the silence, definitely. I mean, if it's not like one minute, obviously. Um, when 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 starting a podcast, actually, uh, is it's a good thing to do a test run. Just record one, two, three episodes. Send it to your colleagues in the newsroom. Send it to your friends. Ask them what do they think about it. Maybe 
maybe ask them a question about a topic that was in the 25th minute so that you know they listen to the podcast and that will that way you will find out whether whether they got there so that will mean it's uh, it's interesting enough um in terms of like where do you where do you uh, set up a podcast it's it's fairly uh, simple nowadays um uh, anchor.fm is a service that uh, spotify uh, that spotify has sorry uh, so spotify has bought a few years ago uh, they are actually letting uh, letting podcast uh, sorry i'm just going to paste the link uh, they're actually letting anyone uh, to start a podcast for free and uh, host it for free forever uh, so so you can start a podcast for free they have a, a mobile app so you can actually the only thing you need to start a podcast is just a mobile phone you will take a mobile phone download the app and just you know go out into the wild obviously you want better sound so you're going to uh look for a microphone and 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 and, and so on uh just here to show you that uh, you can also uh do it uh within within that you don't need like any extra th things um also yana has some other uh other things um Two more minutes and I'll get to you, Jana. Uh, I have a, a few more slides. Um, okay, so I mentioned uh, live audio. Um, Twitter Spaces is good if, if you have a community there. Uh, Clubhouse, the same. It's, 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 it is less popular. Uh, Facebook has an option for audio rooms. There is this platform called uh, Discord, where you can set up a server and you can have live live chats. Uh, why am I telling you this? Um, people are still isolated, so even though some live events are going to happen and will be happening, many people got used to the idea to uh, you know taking part uh, of an event uh, online, and these audio live audio rooms. Uh, can serve like a good thing where you can connect with your audience. Um, so it's basically try again finding where your community is and and leveraging that platform uh, to reach them. Uh, live live audio can be a good um, uh, uh, let's say so uh, add on to your podcast. So if you have a podcast like usually audiences want to connect with the host of the podcast. So if you're doing a live Q and a episodes episode, those are, those are uh, fairly, uh, fairly popular. So let's say uh, nowadays newsrooms could do, and many are doing like live Q and A's uh, with their audiences on the topic of war uh, in Ukraine. Going to show you some tools. Okay, so this this is how how those uh, live audiences, uh, live uh, audio tools look like. Sorry. Uh, okay, so so in terms of this podcast distribution, um, video is actually one of the best format how you can market your 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 podcast. So basically, turning a clip of your audio into video is one of the most recommended things for marketing when you're doing a podcast and it's not just turning a clip so 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 basically on social media audio is still not like a regular citizen okay so like audio on social media is almost like a homeless person because there's like no native format for uh, for uh, for for this, I'll, I'll I'll send you the presentation in the end. Uh, you, you will all get the presentation with the links and everything. Um, so that's why you want to turn audio into something else, something that, get, that can be distributed natively. So we're talking video, we're talking images, we're talking text. So uh, one of the most common things that is recommended for podcasters is 
if you're doing an interview show, just also publish the transcript of the whole podcast. And the idea is discovery. So how are going to like, if someone wants to listen to your podcast and they don't know what the podcast is about and they're not willing to even, you know, play a trailer, uh, which you created, a very good idea is to make a transcript and people will uh, read the transcript. They will, and they will, they can decide, okay, so maybe this, this is like, this is good content. This is good story with what I'm reading. Maybe the audio is going to be great. And also in terms of discovery, when you look at uh, Google, which is like the biggest discovery engine on the earth. So let's say you're going to do an interview with a high profile person. Okay. And usually if there are high profile persons, uh, people like, like politicians, celebrities, and so on, people search for them on Google. And it's much more common for a written interview to surface on Google high up than a podcast. Also, uh, if you're sharing, uh, if, if you want to promote your podcast on social media, we know uh, Instagram just recently again changed their algorithm on the social network where they're preferencing video. So again, if you do a short clip, you take just one minute, like the, the best part of the podcast and you turn it into video. Now the question, like, how do I turn it into video? That's where uh, this tool called headliner.app comes in. You can, you can actually upload uh, your whole audio. You can uh, choose a aspect ratio. Like, do you want it for uh, a story or, or a square? Uh, you can then edit the audio into like just one minute there you don't need other software and as you can see there's like a nice editor um it has like 180 languages it's going to transcribe it so there is like transcriptions included but because when you're doing social video nowadays i i cannot recommend enough like doing it always with captions like always 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 with captions Usually people, when they scroll through their, their, their social feeds, uh, they don't have audio on. So when they just see, when they just see something is like moving, like there's a the audio wave that headliner will generate for you. It's, it's not enough for people to stop. They need to see where it's moving. Uh, and you can actually do that with headliner. They have like very nice uh, how to videos. Again, it's a tool which you can start use uh, for free. Uh, you can create, I think, up to four or eight videos per month uh, for free uh, uh, with the transcription in all that all those languages uh, and, and use it for podcast promotion. And it also will give you, uh, in, it will trans, it will basically turn the whole podcast into video, which I said in the beginning, I encourage putting always on YouTube because it's, again, as I said, a big discovery platform. So we have like three tools that are super useful when you're trying to develop audio in your newsroom, Beyond Words, Anchor, and, and Headliner. And before I introduce Jana uh, with her presentation, I'm just going to say uh, uh, a nice stat. So the uh, she works for Daily Sme and and when when they started doing podcasts, um, the average website reader or newspaper reader was 50 years and older. And on the website, those people, like those readers, spent 20 minutes. When, when they started doing podcasts and started to look at, look at like, okay, what's the average age of our listener? It turns out they're like much younger and they spend far more time uh, with their podcast and based on some recent uh, recent uh, survey they have done more than 50% of their subscribers are podcast listeners so again building habits this is like very good touch point with your subscribers supporters um, and 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 it can very easily develop into uh, into 
uh, habit. Okay, uh, that's all from me. Oh, if you have any questions before I, I, I uh, give the stage to Jana, you can ask. Now is the time, or you can have questions later after her presentation. Okay, Jana. Yeah, I'm here. Else. Okay, I will just yeah, share. Yeah, no. yeah. <clears throat> sorry, just before you start. So I think um, it looks like we're going to run over by about 10 minutes. Is that okay with everybody? I just thought I'd say now rather than interrupting Yana. Yeah? yeah. If, uh, I, sorry, I maybe have to leave, that, uh, to leave a bit, little bit earlier, but that's, if that's okay. Okay, great. But you'll be back tomorrow? Yes, of course. Yes, terrific. Okay, sorry, Yana, please go ahead. No, that's okay. So I can share my screen now. I will try. All right, can you see it? Okay. So my presentation will not be that long as David's. <laughs> And yeah, uh, I want to introduce myself uh, at the beginning. I am Jana Machkova. Uh, I am the leader of podcast and video department at the um, news outlet uh, SME Daily. And uh, I want to talk uh, about why podcasts are important for publishers, for media, and also about how you can create podcasts uh, even if you have a small budget or a low budget or maybe no money, I will get to that point. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to um, have some uh, to uh, give you some details about SME. Um, the first podcast that we uh, published was in 2017. Um, it was a daily news podcast, Dobre Rano. Um, you can translate this. Uh, uh, you can translate it as a good morning. And back then, it was not very popular among the people to listen podcasts. So uh, there were just few listeners of uh, podcasts in English or maybe in German language. So uh, that's why we are the oldest podcast uh, publisher in Slovakia market. Uh, today, we have more than 20 podcasts in our portfolio. We will um, come, uh, come to that. For last year, we had uh, 2 million downloads per month. Uh, but uh, this number doubled for last uh, February. Uh, we had almost 4 million downloads, and it was because of the war in Ukraine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jana. Um, maybe maybe your gain is too too high on the microphone. Really? Or maybe you're too close. It's it's just like doing this weird voice. It's it's not just me, right? You're hearing that as well. Okay, just so let me check it. Maybe, maybe connection is there or wrong or. Yeah, I will. I will try to reconnect it. Say something. Okay, what about now? Uh, it's, it's like the gain is too, still too high. It's like, you know. Okay, maybe. You're being, you're being too loud okay. and it's going uh, over there. Okay, what about now? A bit Has better. It better. It's no. better? A bit, but not much. <laughs> I, I think it's fine. Okay, is it okay, okay. for everybody? I, I mean, I know it's, it's, I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I, it's not podcast quality. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <not. That's it. laughs> okay, I'm sorry about it, but I just don't know what to do um, with it. So yeah, let me continue. Uh, yeah, so we were uh, pretty um, successful last month because of the war in uh, Ukraine. We had um, several episodes uh, in uh, Dobre Rano, in the daily podcast. And yeah, um, like we had much more listeners than before. 
And uh, each year we make a survey among our listeners and uh, I will show you some stats from the latest one. So uh, we found out that our uh, listeners are mostly men. Uh, the, bigger, the biggest par part of our listeners are between the ages of 25 and 34. And uh, also the majority of our, our listeners are, let's say, heavy podcast listeners because they tune into podcasts uh, daily. And the most popular app for listening to podcasts is uh, Spotify. Um, I think this is something specific for Slovak market uh, because Spotify is a very popular app in uh, Slovakia. Uh, so people used to listen uh, music for it and also the podcast. So they don't need to have another app for just only podcasts. Uh, that's why they listen also podcasts through Spotify. Okay. Uh, I want to tell you some more details about how did we start. Even I wasn't there, <laughs> because, although I wasn't there, uh, because I came to SME in 2020. But uh, David is uh, one of the founder um, of our podcast production. So, but I was talking uh, with my colleagues and I will share with you their thoughts and uh, they are, their experiences uh, from that time. So um, podcasting in, in SME was something like an experiment. They wanted to try something new. They um, listened a uh, um, bunch of podcasts in English and they liked it. So they wanted to bring it to Slovakia too. And nobody did it that time in Slovakia. So yeah, it was something like a pioneer. Uh, and uh, they didn't hire any like a professional speaker or professional editor. Uh, they just uh, found uh, uh, volunteers among uh, a newsroom. So uh, for our first uh, podcast, the Dobre Rano, the daily news podcast, uh, we had uh, four hosts. We have uh, guests as our reporters from newsroom and we had one editor. Uh, we had a very big advantage because our TV studio was already built. So we used equipment from the TV studio to rec record a podcast. And uh, yes, they thought uh, it can last for maybe a couple of weeks on, or maybe a couple of months, but it became popular and the listeners really liked it. So more and more people from our newsroom uh, wanted to have their own podcasts. Uh, that's why uh, Click launched it in um, uh, February uh, 2018. Uh, one of the hosts is David, and it's a, a weekly podcast about tech news. We also launched it on uh, Zoom. It's a science podcast, and we also um, started to publish Daini. That's a weekly history podcast. And from the time we continue to produce more and more podcasts. So today we have more than 20 podcasts in our portfolio. Uh, you can see some of them here. Um, the first icon, the blue one, Dobre Rano, that's the uh, first podcast from our production. So it's a daily news uh, podcast. The, mo the, uh, the most of our podcasts are weekly podcasts, as I said, uh, Click about, uh, uh, about uh, tech news, Gaini, that's a history podcast. Uh, Piatoček is a very popular, it's becoming very popular because it's a comedy podcast. And um, I know we are uh, more, uh, more on serious topics, but yes, this is something different, so uh, we can slightly reach different types of audience with it. Uh, we have also economic podcasts, um, I don't know, podcasts about uh, mental health, etc. And we have also mini series. Uh, for example, uh, very strong mini series is a uh, Gingcast. It's about uh, 
women health issues and also Klima podcast it's about the climate change and the global issues okay well um some of you they uh you you create already your own podcast but um some of your newsroom i i guess doesn't have podcast and maybe you are asking why podcasts are uh are good for you or uh why is it important to have a podcast in your newsroom or in your portfolio so i just want to highlight some benefits of the podcast and yes you can spread your content to more people uh and enlarge your audience because as you know uh, there are certain group who for example doesn't like to read an article they prefer to listen the news or there are people who rather uh, watch the news than than read it so yes you can you can manage with different types of uh, of targets or with different types of groups of people and spread your content to them uh, you can also build a community about uh, around the podcast we for example um I want to mention we have a special Facebook fan group. So um, I think there are approximately 6,000 members and each day we are discussing with them, with them a new episode of the podcast. Uh, they are asking us questions. We are posting uh, pictures from backstage, for example, from recording our podcast, etc. Uh, sometimes we uh, we are trying to get their feedback of for a specific episode or for a specific uh, change in the podcast, etc. So it's it's great to be um, in interaction with them all the time. Um, also, uh, for in every podcast we mention SME, so uh, you are listening this and this podcast, and it's produced by SME. And it can, uh, we think, <laughs> and uh, I think the data approves it, uh, it can drive more traffic to our website and it also makes uh, our media more visible. It also, get, um, may, it, it, it also might uh, gain more paid subscribers. Uh, for example, if you encourage your listeners you can support our um, our work, or uh, if you want to listen more um, more quality podcast, uh, you can support us uh, uh, to buy an article or to to become our subscribers, and then you have uh, more income to uh, create um, more podcasts or whatever you need it for. And uh, also, podcast is another platform to attract your advertisers. So you have uh, space for more ads. And uh, yes, as well, you, you can bring it more income. OK. Um, if you have problem with budget, I think it's no problem. <laughs> For uh, starting a podcast, you need only a time. And uh, well, I, I always say you need three things, passion, willingness, and a good microphone. Yes, you have to buy a good microphone, but it's not a very expensive thing. Uh, you can buy um, microphone in very good quality, I think for $200 or 200 euros. So it's not that expensive. Uh, you can search for any free recording or editing softwares, so you don't have to worry about this. You need to learn to edit the podcast. That might be a difficult one, but uh, I think it's manageable. You can also um, download some, uh, you, you can also use. Uh, some free podcast hosting service. As uh, David mentioned, uh, Anchor is one of them. Our uh, Castbox is, uh, I think, a free provider as well. And um, if you 
uh, if you plan to create or to start to create a podcast, just um, just do it with small steps. You you don't have to do something big and um, the the uh, very creative work. Um, basically, uh, it's better to do it simple. And I think the simplest way is to uh, to start and podcasting is uh, to to do an interview with your colleague, or uh, you can also do. Uh, um, news um, I, uh, um, I um, sorry <laughs> I used to call it a, a news monologue so uh, you have an written article and you read it uh, it's something uh, similar that David mentioned before so uh, you read it out loud and you record it and you have a podcast it's uh, always um, something like a, a short podcast maybe five or ten minutes and uh, it can be uh, as uh, the latest updates of um, certain topic or uh, the latest news from the uh, from the day. And yeah, uh, just uh, try to use your colleagues as host and as a guest, so uh, you don't have to pay a professional speaker or um, I don't know professional professional hosts. Etc. So yes, you can do it in on low budget too, but uh, you just um, you 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 just need to want it <laughs> very hardly. Okay, and if you went through these steps, so you are creating your first podcast, for example, I have some tips how to up upgrade it. And uh, I will be following also uh, David's words. So please always promote your episode on social media. Uh, as I said, we have a special Facebook uh, fan group, but we have also um, a Facebook account and Instagram account as a SME. So uh, we all, always promote a new episode uh, there. Uh, but we also make uh, short audio snippets. Uh, David show it to you uh, at the um, what was the pro program Ben the uh, headliner. Yes, headliner. I'm sorry. Yeah. So in headliner, uh, you can make a short audio snippet, and you can encourage your uh, users on the Instagram to uh, to click on the link and to listen all podcasts we usually uh, try to highlight the most inter interesting part um, in, in the episode. Uh, uh, you can see how does it look on the, on the right side on my screen. So yes, um, there is a static picture, there is a logo of uh, the podcast, uh, some audio wave and the subtitle. Um, you can also, uh, this is something, yeah, a big upgrade. Uh, you can shoot the video while recording the podcast. So you can also upload the video on YouTube. And uh, as David said, you can also upload your podcast on YouTube. Uh, if you are not uh, filming uh, the recording, you, you are not actually filming the recording, you, ca you can put just a static photo and with audio lab and some yeah captions or something. So um, basically you can do whatever you want, but yes, share it on YouTube. That, that's good advice. Uh, you can also trans transcribe your content, your podcast content, <clears throat> sorry, into an article. Uh, we don't do it often but uh, if we have a special guest or a very interesting topic we do it uh the last time we did it um i made an interview with a volcanologist and uh he talked to me about the explosion of hanga tanga volcano i don't know if you are aware of it it was like two months ago i guess it was like huge volcano explosion and uh, he was um, 
he was explaining to me the details why um, did it explode, etc. And it was pretty interesting. So we transcribed it into the article and we locked it under the paywall. So uh, this is the way you can also gain more paid subscribers for your media. Um, okay, this is very specific. Uh, we have uh, also partnership with local radios, local radio stations. We have two contracts and our um, daily news podcast Dobre Rano is aired each morning. And I think it's uh, mostly about uh, gaining awareness about, uh, yeah, like getting to know the, the name of the podcast and uh, the name of the media as well. And I think that the last tip is to make a newsletter. And I have, you can do it um, in two different ways. Uh, one way, we do it for a podcast click. Uh, David is uh, uh, one of the hosts of the weekly podcast click. And uh, with another colleague, uh, they are discussing uh, the main topics, the tech, uh, tech topics of the week, uh, but they have just um, an hour of time of discussion. So, uh, but there are a bunch of more news about the companies, about battles, about, uh, I don't know, whatever. So uh, they, um, they are collecting these news and info into the newsletter and then uh, they send it to subscribers also with sources and um, foreign uh, articles, etc., and so on. And the, the other type of uh, newsletter is, um, well, I mentioned the, uh, the uh, like, uh, if you are reading aloud loud the article, what was already writ written and you record it as a podcast, so you can create a newsletter from it too. Uh, we did it for um, this particular uh, situation uh, in Ukraine. So when the war uh, became, we started to um, publish Ukrainsky Spravodaj. It's a daily podcast, evening podcast. And it's a summary of the um, most highlight news from Ukraine from the day. And we collect uh, all the news in the article. We read it out loud as a podcast, and then we send it to, sub uh, to subscribers as an article and as a an podcast. So they can choose uh, what, they what content they prefer. And yes, they will just read the, um, the news or they will just listen the podcast. Yeah. And that's, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for attention. Um, I told you I, I'm not going to be that long as David. <laughs> but if you have any questions, I will, uh, I'm pleased to answer it. Or if you, um, if you will have questions later, uh, you can write down my email address and then you can write it to me and I will answer you. Thank you, Jana. So if you have questions, just go, go ahead and you can ask uh, Jana while she's here or, or me, uh, I'm still here. Uh, if, if you're not going to ask, I'm, I'm just, I'm just uh, going to I drop it. I just wanted to, I wanted to ask, you were talking about the microphones, which ones do you recommend? Um, For the, you know, a, a good, cheap microphone. <laughs> yeah, I, I have two recommendations, uh, Blue Yeti and also Rode microphones. They are the best qualities, I guess. David? I have a different recommendation. I, I, uh, I've pasted it into the chat. I would recommend the, the Sure uh, MV7 microphone uh, because that's more... It's 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 the top of the line and it's not that expensive, so it will cost you uh, two hundred bucks. Uh, 
you you will need a stand to buy with it which which is another maybe 30 bucks so let's say 250 euros and you will have a microphone which will be great 20 years to come like like definitely that's like that's a microphone that's being used in professional studios and sure the company they they they've created it to be versatile so you can cr- you can connect a USB to it, but you can also uh, connect uh, XLR uh, output. Uh, it has an XLR uh, uh, output. So, so it's like, I would say that's, that's the best when you have the money and, and, and don't know what you're going to do with it. I think Blue Yeti is uh, good as well, isn't it? There was a shortage of Blue Yetis, so you couldn't even get them <laughs> on Amazon. So, so I was looking for a Blue Yeti a few years back and like it's still the same situation now. Uh, they're just like okay. in too high demand. But, but yeah, it's, it's a fine microphone for, for YouTubers or uh, another company which is doing good microphones for, for creators and I guess podcasters is called Elgato. So if you come across an Elgato microphone, which is around 100 euros, th- those are fine. I mean, we can, uh, we can include... Uh, a selection of microphones yeah. and, and that would be great that would be good any other questions is anyone is anyone else thinking about starting a podcast was this helpful I mean I really liked Yana you know the the whole sort of strategy you know that you you know you record the you know and David you talked about it as well you know you record the podcast so that you can also put it on YouTube creating the small social videos is really important um you know the newsletter wrapping around it as well did you have any suggestions for because um like how do you actually build that newsletter audience that goes with it as well how do you get the emails are there strategies for that Oh, yeah. David. David or Yana. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, so, so it's basically like just uh, again, again, and uh, just telling the audience like, okay, we have a newsletter. You have a, uh, so again, I'm, I'm coming back full circle. We have a good value proposition yeah. of, of the newsletter. And uh, Yana explained it very well. We are basically telling uh, all, our audience like, okay, so here is a, here is the most important news and we're going to, tell that to you we're going to present it but there's like a lot of like you know more things happening if you want to be aware of them the best thing you can do is subscribe to our newsletter obviously with the newsletter you get you get the email addresses of the people so so like it's super important we were able actually sell uh, merchandise via our newsletter just because we had the newsletter, we included the link and it was like super seamless. Yeah, I, I wonder because the thing is you're you're like in a podcast, so you might be out walking or something. So you're not somewhere where it's really super easy to subscribe, you know, to, with the, with your email. But anyway. So including, um, uh, we're always including a link in the description. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so using the description of the podcast is a good way to include um, uh, useful links. So, so, so that's one way of doing it. And, and, and as I said, like again and again, some sometimes people are you know listening to the podcast and sitting behind a, a computer, so they can type in a URL address. So you can make a short URL address for that. Uh, and, and they'll just do it. Other times they're just on their phones and they just, you know, they, they will never click that link or open their browser. So that's why you have to repeat it and repeat it. And mm. it helps. Yeah. Uh, one, one, other, one other question, um, because so, so just for background, um, I, I talk to a lot of the minority media news organizations about the challenges and the big one is in the transition to digital is that the audience is older and how do you how do you you know build that younger audience and so Yana what you talked about with the podcasts the or the age of the podcast listeners is much lower for for minority media organizations how I mean how do you recommend that they actually go out and find that 
audience? Because I think that was the big challenge that people found. I guess through just the social strategies that you were talking about. Any other tips, David or Jana? Um, I think it also, um, hmm. I think it's basically also about the topics you uh, you are creating, you know, yeah. because if, if you are creating this um, comedy podcast, it's uh, always uh, targeting the, the younger group of people. Uh, but uh, I think, well, actually, in our market, uh, there are space for podcasts for um, uh, aiming uh, older people. Uh, we don't have uh, such a thing, I guess, in Slovak market. And I know one of the, I think, American podcast, uh, 70 over 70. And it's a great one because you can uh, share uh, life experiences of, um, of uh, different kinds of very interesting people who are older and they are, they are just the different uh, types of perspective of the topics, you know. So, yeah, I, I, can, I, can, uh, I can imagine we will have it in our portfolio in some way to, to have a podcast for older people and maybe also younger generation uh, would like to listen to it because uh, it's like completely different content, you know. In terms of reaching minority media, so you already have uh, uh, some connection, right? Uh, if if you have some connection, so let's say you have a newspaper which you're where you're using uh, to reach those audiences. So there is uh, there was a successful case study in Germany uh, by a local newspaper that actually used QR codes. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So you can uh, you can make a QR code. There is this uh, service which is called Podfollow. Uh, I'll paste the link in, into the chat, and also I'll, I'll 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 include it later. It's it's for free, and basically it will create a deep link for your podcast. And whether someone opens it on an iPhone, it will go straight to Apple Podcast. If someone opens it on Android, it will go straight uh, to uh, Google Podcast. That's one mm -hmm. thing that I've seen used. And the other thing is basically using those. Um, uh, like young audiences to deliver uh, deliver the podcast for for the older audiences. So, for example, um, I've I've uh, tried to research this for for daily news for for our daily news podcast in Slovakia and like how you know how how does it come that we have like quite large uh, audience uh, in 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 uh, the age group fifty plus. Um, and it turns out that it was like the young audiences who loved the podcast and actually uh, showed it to their parents and grandparents how they can listen because mm -hmm. the, the pro again the value proposition is great you will get the most important news you don't have to read it someone will do it for you it will you know the the the, the news will be explained to you but pro by professionals journalists and it's for free and it's delivered right to your phone and and nowadays all, like uh, I, I don't know like maybe there are like different communities where it's not the reality but up to 70 i would say even even those like a, a bit older people already like are using the phones just because they're connecting with their families so so it's basically like creating a campaign i remember american um uh, the american podcast um uh what's this called uh, the 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 host is ira glass um i i, for, I forgot the podcast name but um uh, uh it's like a weekly podcast about american stories um this american life Ah, this American Life, yes. yes, and they did a campaign a few years ago uh, yeah. when they actually showed like uh, older people via videos and encouraged the younger generations. Like, mm -hmm. just go to your parents, grandparents, and show them what a podcast is, how they can listen to a podcast. So, so you can do, you know, that's uh, a good idea. Campaign like like this. Yeah, 